I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. And I have a namesake here with me today, Lance Earl. Appreciate <laughs> yes, you, you coming. Do. Thank so you for having me. You'd be a Bishop Earl for sure. I, I hope not. <laughs> but that's what you would be. And I, I would I, be. I, I, I was actually Bishop Erskine, of course, when sure. I was, was a bishop. But uh, anyway, Lance, it's nice of you to come down from Idaho and then share you. your story with us. And, I'm uh, glad to be here. We're going to visit with him for maybe a couple of, uh, a couple of our episodes here because you have such a, an interesting story. And, and so where were you born and raised? And Tell us a little bit about your background. Well, I was, I was born in California, but I actually grew up in Ogden. Uh, yeah. uh, and uh, I, I grew up in a large family north of Ogden, Utah, in Pleasant View. Uh, seven younger brothers. Wow. Seven. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, we were the Earl Herd. And you were the oldest? I was the oldest, wow. yes. Wow, that's a big responsibility probably, huh? Oh, well, <laughs> I don't know. You know, you have that responsibility to beat all your younger brothers down. Well, and that was and kind stay of on top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stay on top of the heap. Yeah, yeah. But it was so it was it was a good growing up. And you went to school there, I guess. Yeah, and... yeah. Went to uh, to the school there, the local school. Went to Weber High School. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, was this uh, were you an active Mormon family, pretty much? We were. My father was hit and miss a lot. Oh. He he never he never seemed to catch that fire. Yeah. But, uh, so he was kind of hit and miss. But the rest of the family, we were active and yeah. did our did our thing as Mormons. Yeah. And uh, I guess that included primary and bapti being baptized at age eight. And all. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can remember, you know, back in the days when you'd get out of school and walk down to primary. And I went through That's that. That's right. It was in the afternoon yeah. rather than on yeah. Sundays, right? Yep. Yeah. That's yeah. when I went. Yeah, I was baptized at eight. And, yeah. uh, you know, the whole, the okay. whole uh, routine right yeah. up through deacon, teacher, priest, priest. all of that stuff. Okay. Yeah. And seminary? Did you take seminary? I did. Not? Yes, yeah. I did. Any questions ever come up about the church in your youth that uh, would kind of hit you funny? Just not not so much when I was a youth. I yeah. was, I, you know, I, it was kind of a mix of I was believing what I was told, but it was also yeah. I was a young man that had other priorities. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever so, bury your testimony, like in a fast and testimony, or around the campfire or something? I, yeah, I'm sure I did. Yeah. I don't really recall. I that yeah. wasn't the most the, the high priority in my life, but okay. I'm sure that I did. That so, was part of growing up. So what happens after high school then? <sighs> well, actually, um, about that time, the hippie craze was dying down. Oh, yeah, back in the yeah, 60s yeah. or so. And yeah, well, was the 70s, and so yeah, we 70s. still knew what hippies were, but they were fading fast, you <laughs> right. know. And, uh, and I kind of got swept up in, in all of that, you know, the the free love and the drugs and, no. and all of that sort of thing and just I just made even a, in Ogden Utah huh? well maybe especially in Ogden Utah <laughs> okay. there's a culture there but yeah but uh, yeah I got I got kind of involved in that moved out okay. of my parents home as uh, oh, and spent a few years just kind of bumming around and is that kind of just, hard on mom did she uh, she she one time made homemade bread knowing how much I love that and brought it 
by the place where I was staying with a bunch of other hoods. And while she talked to me, my friends all ate the bread and didn't save a piece for me. She was livid. <laughs> so yeah, it was it was hard on her. She oh, was a good mom. Yeah. And did she feel like that was you were kind of a bad example, so to speak, for the rest of the boys? Or? Uh, I, I suppose so. Yeah. I don't remember her voicing it, but I'm sure that she yeah. did. In the, in the back of her mind. Huh? Sure, yeah. So you just kind of go on for a few years that way, or how? I, I, I did. I, I, actually, actually, for me, it started about 16. I dropped out of high school when I was, it was the first quarter of my junior year. Oh, really? And so I never went back to high school. In fact, when I went to college, it was before they had computerized records, and I just applied, and they let me in. Nobody ever knew that I didn't nope. graduate high school. They just assumed. That you... <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so anyway, it's just after a few years, my my life was just so upside down. Yeah. And I can I can remember one time, uh, one morning. Well, I, I I had to get away from it because my friends were still all involved in all of that mess. And you, you know? started feeling like you shouldn't be, I, I shouldn't guess. be, yeah, I needed to. Were you feeling guilty, not because of the church, but well, I, were you? Yeah, yeah, because of the church. You, know, you I felt had like you beliefs. weren't living up to the standards. Yeah, I wasn't what I should be. and yeah. So I joined the military and just planned oh. to just move away and start fresh, you yeah. know. And uh, uh, I, can, I can remember one morning, about a month before I went in the military, I just was sitting on the edge of my bed one morning. And, yeah. And I was feeling so filthy, so, you know, unworthy, unworthy of Jesus. Yeah. And, and uh, man, I cried so many tears that day. They were tears of bitterness and sorrow and regret, but they were also tears of joy because Jesus came to me. And the most amazing... Well, you're on the bed there. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Who, who knew Jesus could come to you there, you know? <laughs> so I, it was such a wonderful thing, but... The, this is one of the first things in my life where I look back and go, wait a minute, Mormonism didn't make sense. Because there was Jesus, and if you read Jesus in the Bible, all he ever asked us is to have a change of heart and believe in him. Yeah. Right? And, I mean, I was there. He I, my life changed. From that day forward, I was a different person. But once that happened, then, well, I said, then I said, thanks, Jesus, and I pushed him aside, and I rushed down to my bishop to make sure that I could be forgiven. Because the little Jesus of Mormonism couldn't forgive me. I had to go to the man with all the power, which of oh, course was yeah. a bishop. Did you, you say you're feeling somewhat guilty or unworthy about things. And sure. Were you then praying on, this, on the bed? I mean, were you expecting this? Were you asking God for it to intervene? Oh, or, yes, I, I was absolutely praying. And yeah. I didn't, but I didn't expect what had happened. No. I, I anticipated that I was just going to feel filthy and rotten and dirty, and I would go down to a bishop, a man, yeah. who would fix it. And that was the religion I understood, and so that's and what you, I expected. you say Jesus kind of revealed himself or in your heart or well, in your mind? And, I, I think so. I yeah. don't know how else to describe it, because what started out as many tears of bitterness and sorrow and regret yeah. turned into a lot of peace. Yeah. And that had to be Jesus, right? I, I would say so. But <laughs> your reaction, I mean. because of the church, would be to go to the bishop and yeah. this higher authority, a man, right. Right. and uh, yeah. do what Jesus couldn't do there on the <laughs> forgive you of your exactly sins. Exactly right, yeah. It's interesting how in the Bible Jesus forgives sins and say, just go sin no more. He doesn't say go to the bishop and confess your sins, but well, that's you, a whole other story. Uh, one, one of the things that I find so beautiful there is that the people come to him and they don't even ask to be forgiven. I'm th the blind man at Jericho yeah. is one, you know. But there are many who say, heal me. Heal me of my blindness or my lameness or whatever. And he asks them if they believe. And then, and then he turns around and he says, your sins are forgiven you. They didn't even ask for that. But belief is sufficient. Uh, and it's just, uh, it's so amazing. So what happened with the bishop? I was, I was a bishop's court was convened. Uh, mm. So I had to confess in front of a those four men, and I was disfellowshipped at at 18 and spent a year, you know, kind of a scarlet letter. I couldn't oh. couldn't participate in meetings. I had to be there, but I couldn't participate. I couldn't no, this pray. This before take you the went sacrament. in the military? Or well, and while I was, because yeah. this all happened yeah. about a month before right, I went in. Right. So, yeah, while I was going in the military. And in fact, I was still disfellowshipped when I went, met Mindy, my sweetheart. And now, Mindy's your wife. She's my wife. And that when you first met her, or she had just, well, tell her, tell us your, her story. She was, she was a new convert, uh, new convert when I first met her. She'd been uh, 
I, I'm not sure. Less than a year. But there in Ogden, she had been converted. Well, no, I was in the military, so I was. Oh, you met her. I was in Washington State. Oh, I so see. she's from the Tacoma area. Okay. And so I met her at a young Fort adult. Lewis. Fort yeah. Lewis. Yeah. yeah, that's where I went. Oh, did you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I yeah. have some of your footprints there. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> uh, but but anyway, we uh, uh, we met, fell in love, and. But even then, uh, so you, that must have been an answer to a prayer. You're thinking, okay, here's this sweet Mormon girl that I'm yeah. marrying, and yeah. yeah. But you know, I, I I was living all the Mormon standards and had been for a year. Yeah. But still, I couldn't take my wife to the temple. Oh. So I was still with the Scarlet Letter, okay. you know. So we were married civilly, and I took her back, and we were sealed a year later. In the Ogden Temple. Is Ogden that right? Temple. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And so then you let. Uh, started your family there or you started living there in Ogden? Well, no. Uh, we actually raised our kids in Washington State. We oh. stayed up there. Oh, okay. Uh, we came to the Ogden Temple because that's where all of my Mormon relatives are. And your family and sure. everything. Yeah. yeah, so we came there to be with them. Oh. And so you just kind of live a normal Mormon life at this point? You're active mm -hmm. in the church. I, I know active, you have a yeah. lot of callings. You Lots were, of callings, yeah. You know, tell us a few of those that you were... Well, everything from the nursery guy, which, by the way, is the worst calling in the church. Um, Some people like to hide away there, though, you know. <laughs> well, it killed they're me. They're not in front. Uh, I was gospel doctrine instructor. Elders Quorum President, High Priest Group Leader, oh. had some state callings and young men's. And you even taught early morning seminary. I, I, right? Well, I did as a substitute. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And, uh, and so, yeah, that's, that, that's what I did. I accepted every calling and did my best with them. And, and that was up in Washington, I guess, still? Yes, still yeah. in Washington. Okay. Uh -huh. So then what, what, uh, what happens in life? Well, we had, we had a few uh, experiences. Um, that caused me to start to question the whole the whole notion of men being called to stand in the place of God. And and one, it's it's actually kind of a funny story. Interesting, uh, you'd have that perspective. What? <laughs> well, it's here's the perfect example. I was I was called to teach uh, the sixteen year old kids, course sixteen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I I accepted that calling and I taught the first week and it went it went fine. It was good. I was having fun because I like to teach. I like to talk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, then I got called back into the to the bishop's office by the counselor who had called me. Mm -hmm. And he said, "We're going to release you." And I said, "I've only taught for a week. Why are you going to release me?" And and he said, "Well, uh, one of the fathers of one of the kids in your class doesn't want you to teach his daughter." And I thought, man, okay. Was there a reason given? Or no. Just, oh. No. It just didn't, didn't have a personality conflict I, with you or something? Yes, yeah. I don't know. I probably forgot to say hi to him once <laughs> in a grocery store or something. I don't know. So, uh, in, anyway, people are called in to Mormon callings after the oh, whoever calls them gets inspiration. Prayer and thought so and inspiration. Prayer, yeah, God yeah, gives yeah. the answer. Yeah. So, I, I asked this counselor, I said, well, did you pray and get an answer before you called me? The first Which, of course, was a week ago. Yeah. And he said, well, of course we did, because yeah. what else could he answer? Right. So then I asked, well, did you pray and receive an answer before deciding to release me? <laughs> and he said, of course we did. And what, what else could he say? <laughs> he had to say yes. And so then I just it had said, to be working by inspiration. Right? <laughs> so I, I can remember this. It was just hilarious. I said, so which one screwed up? And he looked at me and he went, huh? And I said, which one? Was it your Monday God or your Friday God that got it wrong? <laughs> and they went and, and they, they actually ended up, instead of going to God and trusting in God, they decided to have an investigation and they sent the Sunday school president around to each home of the, of the kids that were in my class. Really? To ask to to tell them the bishop is concerned about Lanceral teaching course sixteen. Do you have any concerns? Which of course made them go. Well, to, I didn't. To the parents, and now they raise this. Yeah, the parents are thinking. Well, I, I didn't have any concerns, but I do now. If the bishop's concerned, I'm I ought to be. <laughs> so anyway, There's it, something I don't know here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it, it it all worked out, and um, in the end, I kept the calling and moved on. Hmm. But again, I never stopped and realized. You know, I, I was still accepting that man could stand in the position of God. And so these men went to God, got the answer from God, according to them, and then they didn't believe him, so they went to God again and got a different answer. 
And then when the two answers conflicted, they didn't know what to do, and so they gave up on God completely and trusted the parents. And went to the parents. Went to the people, <laughs> having rejected God completely in the whole equation. Yeah, that so. Is so you had little things that came along. That yeah. Kind of, what did you think about Jesus, both as a Mormon and, uh, well, to begin with, before your, I know what you felt on the bed, of course, but during this active time and elders yeah. court president and stuff, what was your thoughts about Jesus then? I, I have always felt like I was a Christian. I've always loved Jesus. Okay. Um, I have just discovered that the Jesus that I knew as a Mormon and the Jesus that I know today are two very different Jesuses. One is very small and one is very large. And by, by small, what I mean is, is just, like, uh, just like me having to go to a bishop to be forgiven instead of going to Jesus. Jesus is pushed aside. He's made small. Yeah so that men can stand in his place. Okay, get between you and God. Right. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And so that kind of stuff, I just started seeing more and more and more of that until mm. I just thought, man. You know, I just started thinking, I think something's broke. And mm. then, then came the big event, which kind of tipped me over. And, well, let's and, go into that. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm very political. I ran for the state legislature in Idaho in 2014. Okay. And, uh, uh, I write a column for the Idaho State Journal. I do. I have a blog. I do a podcast. And if it hasn't been shown yet, there's a, a, a website: www. The word. The word. Dot one. Dot one. Yes. Letter O N E. Yep. For one. Right. And you can get more information about Lance and things that he's written and, and his yeah. biography. I think is in there and some other things. Right. And I'd love you to come by and look because. You know, this is this is my ministry to share the Jesus that I've come to know with my Mormon friends. And I you know, I don't want you to believe me. I don't want you to believe Earl. <laughs> I just want you to open up your eyes and open up your heart to Jesus and then believe him and follow him wherever he goes yeah. and wherever he leads you. That's and, and we find him in the Bible for sure and and in in our relationship with him. We do. Yeah. We do. But uh but yeah, the one that tipped me over yeah, was uh is. Uh, like I said, I, I did a lot of writing and, and speaking, and I teach Constitution classes, a lot of different things. I wrote a column for the newspaper in Pocatello that my bishop and stake president didn't like because it was, it was actually a column that, that uh, talked about the evils of accepting free government money if you're a farmer. Oh, yeah. You know, I promise I will not work at all if you'll pay me. <laughs> okay, so so it's it's kind of that. So I wrote a I wrote a column about that. I supported it with with the Word of God. I supported it with the Constitution, and they didn't like it. And I was called in, and my bishop told me that I may never speak of my faith again, in my columns, my podcast, my blog. Was this article anti-Mormon? Oh, absolutely not. No, and in fact, this article used. Uh, a very powerful quote from Ezra Taft Benson to support it. Oh, my so I had I had Mormon support, constitutional support, biblical support in this column. So tell us again what the bishop told you that you couldn't do. I, I in in all of the things that I do, my writing, my my teaching, my classes, my public speaking, I can't speak of my faith, except in church. <laughs> I, I that face you just made. <laughs> yeah, that's the one you that's had. That's what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and so I said, say what? <laughs> yeah, and so I just said, you know, hey, I teach Constitution classes. Are you familiar with the First Amendment, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of press? You're not going to shut me up. And so about a month later, I wrote another column that that spoke of my faith, and I was called in, and my temple recommend was taken. And oh my goodness, now are these articles available to? To be read? Uh, if you go to the word dot one, yeah, that'll be there. You can find them there. Okay, yes. good. Right. Yeah, and if you can't find it, my contact information is there. I'll get a hold of you. <laughs> yeah, send me an email. I'll point well, you right there. That's fascinating. So anyway, that's what happened, and and uh, and 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 then you know at, at that point I'm thinking, well, I've got a maybe a corrupt bishop or a corrupt stake president. It's just localized. You know, yeah. it can't be the whole church. About when was this? It would have been. Two years ago, so, this month, oh, it was June. Twenty two years ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and so, like I said, I'm just I'm rationalizing and saying, well, it can't be church wide. It's got to be just these localized. People, these two people, localized. Yeah. Well, it went to the regional folks, and they 
looked at the column and the the offensive column, you know, and they said I'd done nothing wrong. I could continue, and they would get it fixed. But when the state president pushed back, then this guy he said, well, he holds the keys. We'll let him do it. So I wrote to Salt Lake. He holds the keys. Yeah, the state president <laughs> holds funny? the keys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so anyway, I, it it went to the it went to Salt Lake. I wrote letters to the first presidency. And I, oh. and I heard back from a member of the Quorum of the Seventy who said, you've done nothing wrong, I can fix this for you immediately. And then he disappeared. Never heard from him again. Oh my goodness. And I wasn't allowed to talk to him. And so I started calling the office of his immediate supervisor, right. who is a, a very high up mucky muck in the, the church. The, yeah, in the church, yeah. in the Seventies Quorum. And all I could ever speak with was his receptionist, who was very, very judgmental, very pushy, very protective of him. Rude. I guess. Or I, I guess. Yeah, keep him away from. But I, I was promised again and again and again and again that he would contact me and that we'd have a chance to visit. And he never did. Never did. And so now. My localized corruption <laughs> starts at the bottom, goes clear to the top. I didn't know what to do, so uh -huh. we found Jesus. Well, tell us about that. How did that happen? <laughs> okay. Well, uh, as as I said, my wife is a convert when right. she was about nineteen, and I've been in the church forever. In fact, my great grandfather was the son of a polygamist. Oh. Which is why I actually have six toes on one foot. Too much inbreeding, but I'll show you my feet later. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> no. uh, my feet are okay. Uh, anyway, uh, I after all of this, I went to my wife one day and I just said, "Honey, I I don't know if I can be a Mormon anymore." And I was really afraid to do this. I'd been thinking about it for months, yeah. but I was afraid of what it would do to her. You know, kind of tip her over. And and she said, "Well, can you give me some time before I give you a response?" And I said, t "You know, told her take all the time you need." Yeah. And she came back with the response I never expected. She said, I have been a Mormon with you our whole married life, and I love you, and I didn't want to ever do anything to hurt you, but I've had serious questions about the church. I, had, I was uncomfortable with serious, you know, several points about the church. Oh, my goodness. And she, so she had had this, and she kept it inside for so long She to never would say me. anything to you. And you wouldn't say anything to right. her. Right. <laughs> we didn't want to rattle each other's tree, you know, and, and it turned out that what a blessing. <laughs> so, so what we decided to do, uh, a pastor from Idaho told us to read the book, of, or read, read the Book of Mormon, read the Bible with yeah. the words, or with the eyes of a child, mm. which actually came from that Wilder, yeah. whatever his Mike, name is. Micah Wilder. Micah Wilder, yeah, yeah. That's, that's where it started. And so we, we did, we went out, we bought two new Bibles, because my Bibles, the margins are just filled with all kinds of reasons why the church is true, because I just scratch all that stuff down. And we bought two new Bibles. Red letter Bibles? Yeah. Were they? Yeah, NIV versions. That's unique, isn't it? Yeah. Don't you love that? I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah. So so we, we decided that we were not going to look at anything that would be considered by the church as anti-Mormon. Okay, just straight. Just straight. We're, straight. Our only source would be the Bible and Jesus. That was it. And I can remember those prayers. We we told Jesus, we're laying everything on the altar. Everything we love, everything we know, everything we think we know, everything that we hold precious and dear, it's all on the altar. All that we've been taught in the church, everything, everything. just everything. leave it at your feet. And Will you give us your truth? We're re we're ready to throw it all away. And we talked about that because we knew that could even include our children. Wow. And we talked about that, and we hadn't finished Matthew before Jesus revealed himself to us, and he is. It was, well, my wife said it this way. She said, it's like I've been in this dark room. And she said, it was, I walked up to the window and I, <laughs> and I wiped it off and looked out and she said, oh, there it is. You know, she saw the light and the joy and the love and of Jesus for the first time. Isn't that amazing? And, and I mean, literally, for those of you out there, if you only get one message from me today, it is this, that when Jesus shines his light on you, you may think you're in the light now, but you come up out of the darkness and it is incredible. It is so, it's fun. Yeah. It's fun. As a Mormon, I used to wake up sometimes and go, 
oh, am I tired enough to skip church? <laughs> Is there any reason I don't have to go to church today? <laughs> yeah. Can and, you think of anything? <laughs> and, and yeah, uh, we, we wake up now and I mean, Mindy gets up every Sunday morning and the first thing out of her mouth is she says, we get to go to church today. It's, ah! <laughs> We're so excited, you know. Isn't that amazing? It's so what much What did fun. you think the first time you went into a, a, a Protestant church or a, a different church? Uh, well, we're, ours is strictly non-denominational. It's yeah. all about Jesus. Yeah, good for and, you. And, you know, I was kind of worried because we walked in there and you could smell the coffee bar and they have popcorn yeah. in the sanctuary. And across somewhere. And I'm sure. yeah, crazy stuff. And I thought, I don't know if I can do this. Yeah. And then the worship service started and the music began to play. And the words came up on the screen. Did they? And we were hooked. Ah, I know. It connected us to Jesus that fast. The, my fear of being fearful <laughs> yeah. just evaporated. Isn't that amazing? And yeah. I, I can't, I can't, we can't explain how that, the feeling of, of that worship music and those words, I still don't know most of the songs, but I, I see them and I, I read those words and it's just, uh, it's worshiping Jesus, which we never did as Mormons. You know, you know, I was talking with one of the members of our worship team and I was just trying to tell her how different it was for us. And she said, well, that's because all of our worship music is vertical. And I said, yeah. what do you mean by that? It's and going to God. It, yeah, and that's what she said. It said it, it goes to God. And I thought, wow. Because most of the Mormon music is horizontal. Praise to the man. That's yeah. horizontal. That's man to man. Yeah. Uh, Jesus wants me for a sunbeam. Families that's, can be together forever. Yeah, and... all good messages. Yeah. You know, uh, but... Love at home and stuff. But, but. The, yeah, but the thing is, where is Jesus? And that was actually one of the last things that was really concerning me as I was attending church as, as a Mormon, is I, I, I started keeping track. During sacrament meeting, do we talk about Jesus? You really paid attention to that, huh? And, and we didn't, with the exception of the sacrament prayer, which is just rehearsed yeah, over regurgitation over. Yeah. that doesn't mean anything. Lance, guess what? We're out of time. Uh, -uh I'm not done. Yeah. Well, I'm <laughs> glad we scheduled a second one because you've got some wonderful things yet to share with everybody. And, I do. And so we appreciate you again coming and we'll be back in just a, well, we won't be back, but next week we'll have a new, another visit with you. So yeah, I appreciate yeah. you. Come back. Taking your time. I guess we've got 15 seconds, but, uh, so we appreciate you all watching. And I know I say it every once in a while, but you really are following a gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. And read that Bible.